ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار ان شاء الله we're tonight with the third lecture of كتاب النكاح the third lecture of the chapter of uh, marriage and just uh, before I start with this lecture tonight ان شاء الله خاطرة and that is قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث معاوية رضي الله عنهما معاوية نبي سفيان أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من يرد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whomever Allah سبحانه وتعالى wants good for يعني anyone that Allah wants him to have something good he will give him the knowledge of the deen he will give him the understanding of the deen and the reason this comes to mind is uh, to see after يعني, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then by the uh, help of many brothers who are involved and we're going on the path of the da'wah uh, the comments and the uh, criticism that we receive uh, and this is perhaps the sunnah of the prophets as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and we heard uh, in Salat al-Maghrib where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ يعني قوله تعالى in the meaning that we did not send the messenger before you but he was made fun of إلا يعني was taken as mockery so and this is the da'wah يعني this is those who want to be involved in the da'wah and those who want to take the path of inviting to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have to face that. They will have to face that. And that is يعني, what uh, we're facing at this moment and uh, our magazine, Al-Ghuraba, and يعني, the name uh, applies to the situation was even uh, not allowed to be distributed in one of the masajid in Miami. Alhamdulillah uh, Rabbil Alameen يعني, when uh, one of the brothers who's on the mailing list he asked uh, for his name to be removed from the mailing list today uh, I found out but surprisingly that last night uh, or yesterday during the day his wife called me to tell me that a lot of people will not like what you're doing and what you're saying but continue and uh, yani she, she gave very encouragement uh, words, alhamdulillah. So I said, subhanallah, now I know who she's talking about. But that is the reality, yani. People uh, don't want to hear the truth, and people don't want to hear the authentic knowledge. And all we call for is, qala Allah, qala Rasuluh, what Allah says and what the messenger. If we, the day that we call for something else, come and stop us. Huh? Come and say that what you're doing is wrong. We call, nothing we mention without a dalil, nothing we say, no opinion we say without a hadith or ayah or the athar from the sahaba or the actions of the sahaba or the tabi'een or the first three generations. Whenever we mention something, know for fact that lana fiha athar wa lana fiha salaf. And anything we mention on these pages or in these lectures, we have the big of the ulama who had these opinions and who their opinions were emanating from the Dalil, from understanding the Quran and the Sunnah 
but يعني, uh, today we, we have to deal with the ignorant as, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had foreseen and has, uh, has uh, for, uh, foretold us from before that uh, يعني, the ignorant will be speak ينطقوا فيها الروايبضة that they ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam who is the when the Prophet sallallahu said days will come خداعات يصدق فيها الكاذب ويكذب فيها الصادق ويؤتمن فيها الخائن ويخون فيها الأمين وينطق فيها الرويبضة قال وم الرويبضة يا رسول الله قال التافه من الناس يتكلم في أمور العامة that the Prophet said years will come on the people that are very tricky very tricky and what is their characters these years he said يصدق فيها الكاذب the liar will be taken as trustworthy will be believed the liar will be believed and the uh, truthful the honest person will be considered a liar huh? and the traitor will be trusted and the trustworthy will be uh, considered traitor huh? and Ruwaybila will speak out so they ask the Prophet who is Ruwaybila يعني the uh, ignorant of the people who, have, who is of no worth speaking about the affairs of the ummah and the affairs of the society and the community. So perhaps يعني, we're dealing with this and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not on the side of the ignorance and inshallah we are not since what we call for is قال Allah, قال Rasuluh, what Allah says and what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And we know that this is what they said, and we have it reported, and we have it authenticated. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put us with their Zumrah and with their group. To, tonight, inshallah, we uh, continue with the Kitab uh, al Nikah, as I said, the third lecture. And last time we were speaking, or we were speaking about the conditions of the contract, the conditions of the contract. And tonight, inshallah, we uh, continue with that. قال الم قال المؤلف رحمه الله ولا يصح تزويج أبعد مع وجود أبعد مع وجود أقرب إلا أن يكون صبيا أو زائل العقل أو مخالفا لدينها أو عاضلا لها أو غائبا غيبة أو غيبة بعيدة ولا ولاية لأحد على مخالف لدينه إلا المسلم إذا كان سلطانا أو سيد أنا. Here, he continues to talk about the wali, okay? And we said one of the conditions is to have a wali. And he continues to say, and as I, we said last time, that the order of the awliya, who can be wali, and who comes after him, we said the father, and then the brother, okay? Or the son, actually, we said the father and the son, then the grandfather, and that's all on the, يعني, when we talk about grandfather and uncle, we're talking about the paternal side, huh? the father side of the woman. We're not talking about the uh, mother side. And, uh, and we went on, huh? as we talked about who can be wali, and we said then the brother, a full brother, يعني, from mother and father, then half a brother who's from the father, okay? Uh, and on and on. Here he said, وَلَا يَصِحُ تَزْوِيدُ أَبْعَدْ مَعْ وُجُودِ أَقْرَبْ Except, so the rule is, if the higher in the in the arrangement or in the order of closeness to the woman, huh? the higher is available, then it's not permissible for the lower to take over. It's not permissible since we established that the father is the highest and he's the one who has the most right to be the wali of his daughter. Then we cannot, if the father is available, then the lower one like the son or the grandfather or the brother cannot do it. And we established that already. But there are exceptions. And there are exceptions for the rule. And there are situations that it's very harmful to wait for them, for the highest, if he is, if he is available. So he said, وَلَا يَصِحُ تَزْوِيجِ الْأَبْعَدِ مَعْ وُجُودِ أَقْرَبْ مِنْهِ Okay? Uh, and it's not allowed to use the further in the relationship as a wali if the closer in the relationship is the wali or if the closer in the relationship is available 
Okay, and here we're talking about tangible uh, يعني, uh, availability. Okay, we're talking about tangible, we're not talking about uh, in just in the relationship because we will see that the closer can be available and he's not qualified. The closer can be available but he's not fit. The closer can be available but we have to go to the next one. And those are the exceptions that we will talk about tonight in addition to other, other stuff. يقول لا يجوز تزويج البعيد مع وجود أقرب من إلا أن يكون القريب صبيا. So the first exception is صبي يعني a child. Okay, a child. So if the closest is a child, then we have to skip him to go to the next one, who's adult, who's mature. So for example, the father is dead. So the next one is the son. The son, she has a son, but he's seven, eight years old. So he did not reach the age of puberty. He did not reach the age of rushed, the age of, uh, of being intelligent enough <coughs> to distinguish, okay, to know what he's doing. So in this situation, we have to skip him to the next one. And that will be the grandfather if he's alive, okay? That's what the first exception. And that is Sabi, and that is Madhab Shafi'i wa Ahmed. Even though uh, Malik and Abu Hanifa, they said if the child is, is wise, then he can, uh, he can be the wali. Now, their dalil on that, there is uh, uh, Umm Salama, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to marry her, she told one of her kids, his name Umar, قُمْ فَزَوِّجِ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ so they used this hadith and they said, so she told one of her kids, Umm Salama radiallahu anha, she told him, be the wali for me in marrying the Prophet So those who went to say, it's allowed, that is their dali. They said, you see, she told her son uh, to go and to take care of that wali, to be the wali. So the answer to this dali is first, there is no indication in the hadith saying how old this Umar or this son was. Okay, look how they're critical. It doesn't, it's a, yes, it's his, her son, and we assume a son will be young and small, and so that is why they incline toward that opinion. But there is no specifics in the hadith to say he was a child. Okay, maybe or, يعني, he was 15 or 16 or 18, or, maybe he was يعني, adult. Okay, so that is their first criticism of the dalil. Uh, also, another thing to the, to the hadith, another proof or another reason that this opinion is not strong is the hadith itself is weak. This hadith, the story itself, is weak. It's not authenticated and cannot be used to base يعني, a hukum in it. And, and the reason it's weak, uh, uh, يعني, the ulama usually mention those uh, reasons. Uh, يعني the hadith itself uh, is about the, the, the child. And they say the child is, is يعني the narration in Sanad ibn Umar ibn Abi Salama wa huwa majhul. Second reason that لا يجوز تزويج البعيد مع وجود القريب and that is أوزائل العقل. The second one is the crazy person. Insane. So we have a father then the son. So the father is crazy. The father went through hardships, through problems. Uh, he went bankrupt. He, he went crazy. Okay? So now the fact he's crazy, and we understand and we know that the crazy person cannot be wali for himself. The crazy person cannot represent himself. So how can we ask him to, pre to represent another person? It's one of the conditions. Yes. Okay? So, yani, the, the crazy person, a uh, person who lost his mind, cannot be allowed to buy and sell and, and get married and get divorced and free slave and all that. So if his wilaya or his uh, guardianship cannot apply to himself, obviously it cannot be applying to other people, even if, it's, if she's his daughter. 
So that's why we move to the next one, and that is the son, if he's available, or the grandfather, Khilaf, and the Ahl al-Ilm. Thalithan, aw mukhalifan lidinia. The third reason that we go from the closest to the next, if the closest is different in religion. Okay? So for example, and we, this situation happens a lot in this country, uh, sister becomes Muslim, her whole family is Christian. And according to that, to the rule, is that her wali is her father, if he's, a, if he's alive. But now we have a problem that the father is Christian or, or Jew or Kafir or Hindu or whatever. Okay? So here the ulama said, we have now to skip from that highest person, the closest in relation, that is the father, to the next one. Because they have different in, difference in religion. The daughter is Muslim, the father is Kafir. Okay? You move to the next one. And if the whole family is Kuffar, then obviously the Sultan. A Sultan, man la waliya lah, then in this situation becomes that Imam of the Masjid or the Imam of the uh, Islamic society or, or the representative of the society, that is the person who become the, uh, the uh, wali. Now, some issue he might, might raise. This person or this girl, uh, perhaps in this society here, it's not a big deal. Because honestly, I don't see them caring at all. But perhaps more it's more, you're, you're more uh, confronted with this situation in Muslim countries where they are Christians and one of their daughter becomes Muslim who have this kind of, they are involved with the culture. So yes, they are Christians, uh, Arabs for example, but their culture very much is the culture of the Arabs. So when the daughter is about to get married, the father wants to be the one who gives her in marriage. In this society, and yeah, I don't think they care. That's if they're going to even show up to the marriage. Huh? So that is why the ulama said, if this person, this girl who became Muslim, feels problems or feel it's going to be hard for her to go get married and her wali will be someone strange to her and neglect her father, who's kafir, and that might hurt him and that might even turn him more away from Islam, then they allowed for him to be present. Yani they said, you bring him, yani superficial, you bring him pretending that he's the wali. But the imam or the sultan or the one who's in charge of the community who's going to be her wali is present too. So it's just superficial, so you keep the heart smooth and soft, all right? But again, that is not to be taken out of context. What does that mean? That means don't start applying other rules in Islam and say, well, yani we don't want him to have hard feelings, so let's go celebrate Christmas with them. Or oh, we don't want him to have, to have hard feelings, let's go party with them. Huh? Let's go to the church with them. Let's go to the burial with them. No. Here it's a specific issue. And still, we're saying the one who's supposed to be wali is present. So even some of them said that you do that marriage with the father being the wali, and then when he's gone, you redo it. You redo it. And if you don't, it's still valid if the wali was present, the, the right wali, and that is the, the imam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ The believing men and the believing women are the walis of one another. وَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ تَعَالَى وَلَنْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ سَبِيلًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give the uh, power of the kafirin over the believers. Okay? يعني the kafirin cannot have the wilaya over the believers in this context that we're talking about. So the kafir cannot be wali for them. That is the dalil they say. The difference in religion strip the right from the highest or the closest relative to the next or the lowest. All right? We're still talking about the exceptions. قال ابن عباس لا نكاح إلا بولي مرشد. This is يعني أثر عن ابن عباس. It's not a hadith. It's يعني موقوف. الحديث الموقوف حديث ضعيف. When we say حديث موقوف يعني 
the hadith is narrated all the way and then it stops at the Sahabi so the Sahabi then this the saying the, the metan or the, the content of the hadith is not what the Prophet said it's what the Sahabi said so some people will say this is hadith qala an ibn Abbas and the Nabi ibn Abbas said that the Prophet said la nikah illa bi wali murshid then this hadith is da'if but if we stop at Ibn Abbas, we say this is what Ibn Abbas himself said, then it becomes okay. And this hadith is called Mawquf, Yani stop. Yani stopped at the Sahabi. Okay? Stopped right at the Sahabi. It did not reach the Prophet. So it's the opinion of the Sahabi. But sometimes the Sahabi will say, and he will not say that the Prophet وسلم, said. He will yani, he will say. Uh, he will make a statement. A Sahabi will make a statement. Then we will say, this is a hadith all the way to the Prophet ﷺ. Even though the Sahabi did not say the Prophet ﷺ said. And this happens in what situation? It happens when you know what the Sahabi is saying is something that there is no way for him to know without the Prophet ﷺ telling him. When the Sahabi tells you something about the hellfire, about the punishment in the, in the grave, about the punishment in the... There is no way the Sahabi would have known. So most probably he heard it from the Prophet So that's where the... And this is in the science of hadith and it's, yani, it's very uh, beautiful and interesting when you learn that. So Ibn Abbas عنهما, said, لا نكاح إلا بولي مرشد There is no nikah without uh, a wise wali. Yani wise is, is, uh, is really a deficient uh, translation of Rushd. But we say the Rushd is to be able to measure the situation, to be able to take a right judgment. So he's, and here, yani this is the delil of those who say the difference in religion cannot allow the wali to be wali. And they said, if this is what Ibn Abbas said, and there is no better Rushd than, than the deen. There is no better guidance than being able to distinguish what is right and wrong and make the right decision than Islam. Okay? So these are the adillah of those who said if the difference in and that is valid, inshallah. Now the fourth exception, that is very important. This is a point that we need to pay attention to. And then the meaning of al-adl fi al-lugha huwa al-man'a. In the al-adl comes from adl or adala. And that means to prevent. To prevent. In the mustalah, yani in what they mean, the ulama, when they say adl, they mean an yawna an yamna al-wali al-mar'ata kuf'an radiyat. An yamna al-wali al-mar'a كفأن رضيت ورغب بها بما يصح مهرا. So, in other words, we said the closest in relationship is the one who has the most right to be the wali. Some situations he's not anymore. He lost that privilege. And we already mentioned if he's a child, if he's crazy, and if he's different religion, if he's kafir. We're talking about a Muslim woman. The next reason that he cannot be the wali, if or he he loses that privilege, if if he's preventing the woman that he's his wali of or his guardian of from marrying a person who's suitable, huh? She accepted him and he's accepting her with the right mahr. In other words, if all the other conditions are fit, huh, and all the other reasons are fit, yani, yani for example, I am a father, I have a daughter who's ready to get married, and so I'm the wali, I'm number one. No one comes before me. The father is number one. No argument about that. So this person comes to propose to my daughter. I meet him, she meets him, she likes him. He's a person with good deen. He's a person with good manners. He's a person 
that she's, she likes. She likes the way he carries himself. She likes the way he speaks. She likes the way he thinks. And vice versa. Yani there is no reason for me to say no. Just put it like that. I say no. I'm the wali. And you cannot get married without wali. A woman cannot be married without wali. So I say no. In this situation, let's say for example, I say no. Uh, you know what? I don't like the mahr. I think it's very little. We want more. Because I want a piece for me. Huh? I want to get a piece of it. But if it stays the way it is, it's not enough for either of us. Uh, you know what? You're still young. She's yeah, 16, 17. You're still young. You still have to go to school and finish college and get your PhD and become a doctor. Yeah, and when you're 50, maybe we can talk about it. Huh? Reasons like that. Reasons that are not legitimate. And how many women, they said, no, no, we want to finish school. Oh, we want to finish college. Oh, we want to finish master's. Oh, I want to do MD. I want to do this. And I know a brother who was engaged to a sister, and she was in medical school. So, yeah, and he's telling me about her. And uh, after medical school, that is four years, she wants to go specialty. Okay, what is your specialty? Uh, pediatrics. I, that is, I think, three years. But she doesn't want to stop there. After doing pediatrics, she wants to go and specialize in pediatric surgery. I don't know how many years that. And after that, she wants to specialize in pediatric cardiology. So he's telling me all that, and the brother, Yani, obviously he likes her and all that. I said, dude, when, yani, when are you going to have kids? When are you going to have life? Huh? Yeah, and your wife gonna always be outside. What you gonna do? What kind of marriage is that? And yeah, and he, when he start thinking more, he had to split. It won't work. And how many women who chose that path, and now they cry. Take every, they take every degree from me and give me a child. She's too old to have a child. She was busy. Okay. And the biggest and the best job for a woman is to be a mother. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. The, number, the main thing that Allah created her for, to be a mother. To be a mother. Not to support the family, not to work for the family, not to make money. To be a mother. And when she goes the other way, she suffers. She suffers. Okay? So here... Uh, if the right person comes and there is chemistry, as they say, there is harmony between him and her. And we, we talked about being, sitting with the woman that you're interested in and what, what is permissible and what is not. And they like each other and his deen is acceptable. Huh? And his khuluq and his manners. And the first wali, yani the father, if he's available, says no. Because let's say he doesn't like uh, this guy's hair. You gonna marry him or her? He doesn't. He wants more money for ma, for example. Then the wilaya or the the right of being wali, he loses that right, and it moves to the next person. Very important. He loses that right, and what's happening today, and in societies like ours, what happens when the wali says no? Huh? No, no. What happens when he says no to his daughter? What is the? Huh? She'll go and marry him without him. She'll run away with him. So you accept it for your daughter. Allah, I know a family, and uh, that's exactly what happened. Huh? A neighbor, a good brother, a sees the daughter. He likes her. He he goes through the door, not through the window, not through the the back door through the front door with his family who were interested when I proposed this and that her mother is the one as they say wearing the pants in the house the mother is in charge and how many 
society. It's really it's it's matter of society. You look at a culture and you find that the woman is the one who makes the decision. Everything right and left. She's the one yani, who has the right. She's the one who has the qawama, who has the uh, step over the man. That is refused. But that is the situation. She says no. Okay? The guy is so attached to the girl. And now when you turn about 18 and 19 and 20, even if he's a good brother, when he starts thinking with his heart and with his feelings, he doesn't make the right judgment. So they start talking to each other behind their parents. Yeah, and he, and he proposed again and again and again, and every time, no, 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 you're not at our level. That is the reason. The main reason was, you're different cultures, and we are better. Yeah, and the mother is a doctor, and the father is, I don't know what, but that is the, the mentality. We are better than you. So the end, the girl runs away with the guy to get married somewhere else, huh? I don't need you. The mother gets a heart attack. The father gets sick. All as a result. The sister who was engaged, the man leaves her. Because now the, the, the reputation of the whole family is down in the dirt. So be wise. You take the halal from them. You take the halal from them to lead them into the haram. What's wrong with you? Allah says, you to save your family and your kids and your wife and your, your children from the hellfire. And you are the one throwing them in the hellfire. So the parents, the awliya, those who is wali, he needs to be wise and he needs to make the right decision and take the interest of himself out of it. See what is best for them. Yeah, and I know a brother who was still in college. He, he is still taking his, his, his money from his parents. He met a girl, he wanted to do it the right way. He went to his parents, I want to get engaged. So they said, no problem, yeah, and you still have a few years to finish. We'll get you engaged. They get engaged. Two weeks later, he wants to have nikah. Yeah, I need a contract, at least. He said, it's very difficult. She's my fiance, but it's very difficult to control myself. They said, no. He said, yeah, and he was reasonable with his parents, who were reasonable too. He said, I'm, I'm not telling you because I'm interested in getting married. I'm telling you because it's halal and haram. It's heaven and hell fire. It can be one mistake and hell fire. So when he was able to explain to them, they made nikah. And six, seven years later, they got married. It's not the issue. Okay? The issue is now, they have, they have nikah, they have a contract. It's all met, it's halal. They can be together, they can touch each other, they can kiss each other, and they don't need to worry that it's haram. And that is how parents who are concerned about their kids need to think. Yani, you did a nikah, you did a contract from the first day. What is the worst can happen? It's over, they get divorced. What is the big deal? Yani, alhamdulillah, we are in a society where it's not a big deal if she's divorced or not. Some societies, yani, the woman, when she's divorced, like she, she committed a crime. Huh? When she's divorced, she'll never get married again. Everyone looks down. And that is wrong. Your messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa the only woman that he married, huh, who was virgin, is Aisha. All other, his wife, they were old and married before, not once, not twice, even more. Okay? And they had kids. And Umm Salama was an old woman. Okay? Khadija. Huh? How old was she? So the point is that take لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنٌ You have in the Messenger of Allah a great example. And we're not saying that go marry anyone. And if you like someone and the Prophet said, yes, look for the one who's never been married before. Huh? Al-Wadud. Uh, the one who's more loving. Perhaps someone who was married before will be more, uh, yani, not very excited, maybe a little older, huh? Futur, uh, not yani, interested so much. 
maybe have kids and she's worried. So that's why the Prophet loved the one who's happy, excited, uh, uh, the one who's virgin, the one who's walud, the one who can give you kids. Huh? That's how you marry. But that does not mean the one who's divorced I cannot marry. Okay? But it's very important. Yani, Ubayy ibn Ka'b, not Ubayy ibn Ka'b, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu anhu, when, he, when his father died, I think he left him with nine sisters. Nine sisters. And he was a young man. So when he went to get married, he looked for an older woman. So when the Prophet told him, why you didn't marry someone who's young and fresh? Huh? He said, Ya Rasulullah, yani in the meaning that I have nine sisters. If I bring someone who's in their age, they're always going to be fighting. I want to bring them someone who's a little older, who can be like a mother to them. Look at how wise. All right? So it's very important that uh, yani we understand. So here, if the father or the first wali preventing her from getting married to the right person, then he loses that privilege. That's why the Prophet said, if the person that you accept his deen and his manners and akhlaq propose, then you should marry. And if you refuse, then expect havoc and corruption in the earth. Huge corruption. And that, what is a bigger corruption than that? If me, my daughter, and someone who's right, someone who's in the Quran and the Sunnah and knows Allah and fears Allah and good manners and good reputation and proposes to my daughter and I say no, and who am I going to say yes to? Huh? Obviously, someone who's less in the deen and less in the akhlaq, what's going to happen to him? So very important that we, we follow the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, uh, in this situation, who does she go to? Uh, yeah, and she said, okay, the, my wali is my father and he's refusing, so I'll go to my grandfather. Let's say she doesn't have a son. Her grandfather said, you know what, uh, your father is taking care of me and uh, if I do this, we can have problems and who gonna take? So he refuses. And she goes to her brother, full brother. No one wants to deal with it. Then she takes her issue and her affair to the Sultan, to the judge. And the judge marries her. Not like he marries her. The judge becomes her wali. Marie, the judge becomes her wali. So that is the situation. خامسا يقول أو غائبا غيبة بعيدة. What's the difference between غيبة and غيبة? غيبة غيبة is backbiting. غيبة is absence. غيبة and غيبة. Okay. So, غائبا غيبة بعيدة. Now, the, the fifth reason where the person who has the most right, being the wali, loses that privilege, is if he is absent. And then the way they describe it, a long absence. Okay. Also, it means a far absence. يعني he's far. So what is the what what is far? Yani what decide what's far and what's not? Is Orlando far? Huh? Is uh, uh, Mexico far? Is overseas far? What what do the ulama say? Usually the ulama said if it's a distance of qasr. Yani he's absent a distance of uh, shortening the salah. Remember we talked about the distance and it's uh, how many miles? 60, 50 miles and 80 kilometers and all that. And we said really the, the opinion is what people, uh, yeah, and a strong opinion is what people consider traveling. Because some people, they might consider 40 miles traveling. And some people might not consider 200 miles traveling. Depends on the situation. And some of us perhaps drive more than 50 miles every morning to go to work. 
And if you would ask him, are you, if you ask him, where are you going? Or what you're going to go to do tomorrow? He will never say, I'm traveling to work. He says, I'm going to work. And if you ask him, are you tra do you consider that traveling? He says, no, I do it every day, back and forth. So really, a yani, strong opinion is what the, the custom is, what people consider traveling is. So if we go with this opinion today, that some of the ulama or a lot of the ulama said, if the wali or the first wali is a far away, a distance of shortening. Now in the past, a distance of shortening the salah, if you're talking about 80 uh, kilometers or 50 miles, that's a long distance, 50 miles. He's away 50 miles and all he can use is a camel or a horse or walking. He's too far, right? Today 50 miles, I can make it in uh, half an hour. Huh? Yeah, and you need to speed a little bit. Well, <laughs> huh? yeah, in an hour I can be there, right? So really, the, what the, the stronger uh, opinion that can apply at any time and anywhere is that we say, or the ulama said, if waiting for this one return will make this woman loses the chance. For example, I'm the father, and I'm supposed to be the wali. I am in. Uh, I have business to to take care of in uh, Oklahoma. All right. Someone proposes. The business I'm doing in Oklahoma it has to take me about two weeks to come back. So someone comes and proposes. Right? She likes. He likes. The dean is good. This and that my brother or my father or my whoever, check them out, talk to them, find out about their reputation, great, everything great. So they tell him, okay, uh, please, yeah, and you wait two weeks until her father comes so we can do the nikah. He said, no, 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 two weeks is too long. I really need to, to leave, like for example, let's say he needs to leave the country. Huh? I need to leave in a week, and if I cannot get married, your daughter, you guys are great people, I have to look for someone else. So in this situation, waiting for me or for the father to come back from Oklahoma will make this daughter loses a good chance of marrying a good man. So we say the wilaya moves down to the next one. Now, in today's uh, technology, it will be recommended that we contact the father right? and just call me on Oklahoma. And alhamdulillah, now all plans outside of the state is free. Okay? So you don't have to even pay money for that. You call me, we want to do this, what you think? Alhamdulillah, go for it. Okay? And then we will talk, inshallah, later about doing a contract over the phone. We'll talk about these contemporary things. But that is the situation. If I'm too far, absent, they don't know where I am, or I'm too far away and there's no way I can. If I'm in a coma, now I gave you just physical example of being traveling far away. But what if I'm in a coma and they don't know when I'm going to wake up? They cannot wait for me to, for my door to get married. Maybe I'll never wake up. Maybe I'm in prison. Okay? And maybe I uh, killed the neighbor's uh, chicken. I don't know. They throw you in jail for any reason, is it? Okay? But the point is, I don't know. Maybe I'm somewhere. I'm stuck. So it's very important. So the point is, if the girl will be harmed by waiting for the most privileged wedding, then we can return, then we can, in his absence, then we can move to the next wedding, and the, the further will have the right over the closest. <clears throat> All right. قال شيخ الإسلام نتيمي لو أن الخطاب امتنع من المخطوبة لشدة الولي فإنه دليل على جواز أن يتخطى هذا الولي إلى ولي أبعد أو يتخطى هذا الولي إلى ولي أبعد. شيخ الإسلام نتيمي said if the people who the, the guys who want to propose to a girl but the reputation of her father is that his so tough. In any aspect you can imagine. Yani, some people might, some fathers might be tough 
in what you're gonna ask for mahr. Some father might be tough in uh, drilling and questioning the guy so hard that he will make him yeah, and he collapse. The father is so rude, the father. So his Shaykh Islam said, if the people, or the guys who are interested in marrying a woman, avoid her because they know that her father is so serious and so tough in every aspect and he's gonna make it just miserable and very miserable experience and difficult, then it becomes permissible to skip him to the next way. As you see, Islam wants, if the right person shows up, then you want to take advantage of that and do not mess. Sometimes the wali is yani, uh, right wing, so what can you do? All right? <clears throat> All right. Now he, is, he finished with the second condition. He's talking about the third condition. We said, الولي needs to be مكلف, حر, and ذكر, and ليس مخالفا للدين. We said the wali who's going to be a wali needs to be adult needs to be her free person and yani a slave cannot be wali because the slave has no wilaya over himself uh, huh? yeah we talked about that okay so he needs to be mukallaf hur dakar male only the male can be wali as we mentioned the, the orders we didn't mention any woman okay and he needs to be with the same religion. And we talked about the, the exception. So he, he says, Rahimahullah, وَلَا وِلَايَةَ لِيَحَدٍ عَلَى مُخَالَفَةٍ لِدِينِهِ إِلَّا الْمُسْلِمِ And it's, there is no wilaya for anyone if there is difference in religion. Okay? Except the Muslim. Okay. Except the Muslim. If the father is Muslim. We talk about the situation if the daughter is Muslim and the father is Kafir. If, what if the father is Muslim? The father became Muslim and he has daughters. And she, they stay Kuffa. Can he be Wali? Okay, but is there exception in this situation? I mean, we made exception for the feeling of the, of the kafir father. So imagine a Muslim father who has principles and ghira and jealousy for his daughters and he feels I'm the most entitled to give my daughter in marriage. Is there an exception for him? Allahu yeah. a'lam that some of the ulama made the exception for him. And then when they're confronted with qawlu ta'ala, وَلَنْ يَجْعَ اللَّهِ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Sabila, Allah or the kafirin al mu'minin sabila. Allah will not make a privilege for the kuffar over the believers. They said the answer was yes. Allah will not make privilege for the kuffar over the believers. But here Allah making privilege for the believers over the kuffar, and there is no problem with that. You understand? privilege of the kafir over the believer for the kafir to be wali and in guardianship of the believer that Allah will not allow but for the mu'min or the believer to be the wali and in guardian and have the, the privilege over the kafir and there's no problem with that okay so that is an exception that the ulama have discussed that if the door is kafir still or the sister is kafir or the mother is kafir and the wali is muslim then perhaps we, he can have that, he can have that <coughs> privilege. <clears throat> and then he said, إِلَّا الْمُسْلِمْ إِذَا كَانَ سُلْطَانًا أَوْ سَيِّدُ أَنَا So we, I gave you yani, the, the exception for the Muslim father, but what the ulama talked about is when the Muslim, yani, a Muslim, can be wali for a kafir يعني without major differences amongst the ulama when the muslim is the sultan is the qadi is the one who is ruling the ruler 
If a Kafir woman comes and she has no wali, and no one of her walis want to marry her, then her wali becomes the Muslim ruler, if yani she's in a Muslim country or land. Because the Prophet said, Al Sultan man la waliyala. And he did not specify if this person is Muslim or not. The ruler is the wali of anyone. Okay? So the exception, the first exception that the ulama يعني, agreed on, uh, a lot of the ulama agreed on, is the wali can be Muslim and the person, the woman who's getting married is not Muslim when the wali is the sultan. Then he's the wali for everyone who doesn't have wali, even if he's Muslim and the person who needs a wali is kafir. The second, Sayyidu Ama, okay? And that is the owner of a slave woman. She's not Muslim, but the, the owner, the master is Muslim. Then he has the privilege to be the wali. <clears throat> okay. Then the, the issue, uh, uh, about the father being Muslim and the uh, woman or the daughter being Kafir, I have discussed that already. فصل في الاستئذان في النكاح. The next section that uh, Ibn Qudam rahimahullah speaks about after he finished with the conditions. He's talking about asking the permission from the girl or the boy, from the daughter or the boy to be married. And so far we talked about, now we said the wali, yani in general the wali will be for the girl or the woman. But also the wali is required for a male when, when what? We said the girl is required to have a wali, the female. The male doesn't have to have, the husband who's, or the guy who's going to get married doesn't have to have wali. But in certain situation, he needs a wali, it's required. Eighteen. <laughs> yeah. Now, if if the if the kid or the boy who's getting married is not يعني, mature enough yet, he did not reach the age of he can take care of his own affairs. And some societies allow these kids to get married, fourteen, fifteen, thirteen. It's it's يعني, it's accepted. Nothing is haram about that. The father is the one who gonna manage and take care of him and direct them and do whatever. So he needs to have a way. So when we talk about the permission, we're talking about asking the permission for the male or the female, if they both require a wali or not. We'll talk about it. وَلِلْأَبِي تَزْوِيجُ أَوْلَادَهُ الصِّغَارِ ذُكُورَهُمْ وَإِنَاثَهُمْ وَبَنَاتَهُ الْأَبْكَارِ بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِهِمْ وَيُسْتَحَبُّ اسْتِئْذَانُ الْبَالِغَةِ وَلَيْسَ لَهُ تَزْوِيجُ الْبَالِغِ مِنْ بَنِيهِ وَبَنَاتِهِ الثَّيِّبِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِمْ وليس لسائر الأولياء تزويج صغير ولا صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا بإذنها وإذن الثيب الكلام وإذن البكر الصمات لقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الأيم أحق بنفسها من ولية Uh, now he's talking about the fourth condition uh, of nikah, the shart al and that is the approval of both parties, the approval of the girl and the approval of the of the boy or the groom and the uh, the bride. Uh, his dalil uh, that a woman came to the Prophet 
فقالت يا رسول الله إن أبي زوجني وأنا كاهر كارها فجعل لها الخيار. That a woman came to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, Oh Messenger of Allah, my father married me uh, without my approval. يعني I did not approve. So the Prophet ﷺ gave her the, the option. And this hadith mursal, يعني the hadith is not, is not, the narration does not reach the Prophet ﷺ. Alayhi wasallam, it's yani karaf. So, uh, but the, the 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 meaning is correct and is dalil by itself that the woman has the right to approve, has the right to choose the right man. But there is detail. Huh? There is details and uh, specifics. When we talk first about the males, okay, the males. Can the father marry his male kids? Yeah, and he comes to his son and he said, you got married, I, I, I agreed with uh, so-and-so and, -so and uh, you're gonna marry his daughter. Can that happen? Vice versa, can he come to his daughter and said, you know, so-and-so proposed to you and I told him, I, I approve. Okay, so the ulama have talked about that in details and that is what uh, we will discuss inshallah. Uh, right now. Uh, first, uh, uh, the little male kids. Huh? Little male. So the ma now we're talking about the males. And they are young. They did not reach the age where they are independent. They did not they reach the age where they can depend on, on themselves uh, independent uh, of their uh, parents. Yani, those who did not reach the age of puberty. First, the ulama said he has the right to marry them without their approval. Those kids don't have to approve. Because they don't have yani, their approval will not mean much. Okay? So those kids will not have to approve if they have not reached the age of puberty. They do not have to have that approval, their approval to validate the marriage. Their uh, lead. قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت ومالك لأبيك You and your wealth belong to your father So they said this is a delete that my father owns me So he has the right to, uh, to conduct my, my affairs And this is specifically يعني, for those who did not reach that age When we talk about this topic and that is the marriage So they're saying if it's permissible for the father to take from the money of his younger kid, yeah, and let's say that the, the mother died, and the younger kid inherited some of the money she left. The father has the right to take from that money with the exceptions that we mentioned before. There is no harm on the child, as well as he's not taking it from him to give it to another, another son or another brother to the kid. All right. But the older kids, those who reach the age of puberty, those who are independent, أجمع أهل العلم أنه لا يجوز للأب أو لغيره أن يجبره. Those who are older, يعني over the age of puberty, independent, the consensus of the علماء that the father has no right to force them to marry, to get married, whomever they want. Yeah. So the father does not have that right. So when, for example, uh, a guy tells his son, I found this girl, she's very nice, good family, your cousin, whatever, and then we want you to marry, I want you to marry her. And he's 18, 19, 20, 30, 40, whatever. He said, no, I'm not going to, I don't like her, okay? I don't think she's a good person for me. She's a nice person, but she's not good for me. So the father said, if you don't listen to me, you're disobeying Allah. No. He's not disobeying Allah. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. A, fa a man brings a woman who is good, who is religious, good woman, this, to his family and says, I want to marry. Or he tells them, so and so daughter, our uncle's daughter, my cousin, my second cousin, my, our neighbor, I like her, she's nice, she's good, we know her for a while, I want to marry her. The father said no. Or the mother said no. They don't have the right to do that. They can advise, but they don't have the right to uh, implement their opinion. 
Yani they cannot say, if the son says, no, I want to marry her, he's not disobeying his parents. Because he is qualified to make his own decision. All right? So with the younger kids, then the father can decide for them. Their approval is not important. For the older who reach the age of puberty and older and uh, reach the rush, then they can make a good, good judgments. Then those, uh, they have the right to choose. And the father or the wadi doesn't have the right to force them or to make a choice for them. Okay. The inath, the girls or the females, that is more important. Okay. The inath, we divide them into three different types. When we talk, so when we talk about the males, we say before puberty and after puberty. Before, the father has the right to decide to who they marry and without their approval. And older, then the father doesn't have that right or the wali doesn't have that right. When it comes to the females, we're talking about three uh, levels of females. The first level is girls below nine years old. Okay? Girls younger than nine years old. Those girls, their parents or their father, the wali, can marry them to someone without their approval. And the story of Aisha, radiallahu anha, that she married the Prophet sallam, then Abu Bakr al-Siddiq married her to, uh, to the Prophet sallam, when she was nine, or when she when, when he yani, consummated the marriage when she was nine, that is clear proof that the approval of the, of the, of the girl is not required. It's not required. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to tell Aisha, kama fi sahihain Bukhari al-Muslim, Ya Aisha, kuntu araki fi al-manam, فَيُقَالُ هَذِهِ زَوْجَتُكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرُ Oh Aisha, he, the Prophet used to tell her, I used to see you in the dream, and I will be told in the dream, this is your wife in the dunya and in the akhir. Okay? And the ilm that Aisha brought forth to us is clear. Yeah, and she, perhaps she transmitted one quarter of the deen. So the, the hikmah and the wisdom behind her being raised in the house of the Prophet ﷺ from younger age is to transmit to us every single thing the Prophet ﷺ did. Every single thing. Okay? So that is yani, very important. And yani, a lot of us might be ashamed and keep it secret and don't talk about that. This is our deen. Okay? This is our deen. We cannot hide that. Okay? There is nothing wrong was made. And the society then is different than the way we think. And there are still societies that they marry their daughters at younger age. Okay? What is the point? It's the society and the environment and the atmosphere. It's completely different. You might see nine years old, that's still يعني, four feet. Huh? You might be, see, يعني, I went to, to, to a place where uh, uh, I was told that and it's a place where they take care of, of girls, huh, young girls who got pregnant. Who got pregnant. And they, when they were asked, who is the youngest ever, they said, nine years old. Pregnant. So some society, some race, some cultures, the way, the atmosphere, the environment, the weather. يعني, at the age of nine, she, is, she reached the age of puberty. Some societies later. Okay? So here we're using this hadith as the proof. Okay, that under nine, she has, doesn't, you don't have the wali, doesn't have to get the permission from her or uh, from the, uh, the father. قول عائشة تزوجني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنا بنت ست سنين وبنى بيا وأنا بنت تسع سنين. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, the marriage contract was done when she was six and the uh, consummation of the marriage when she was nine. So that is obviously was not asked for her approval, okay? She was not asked for her approval, and that is, uh, the, now, now when we talk about this, we don't say that this is what Islam said to do, and we're not saying this is the preferable, and we're not saying this is the way it should be done. We're just discussing fiqh, huh? Today, nine years old, perhaps, is not qualified to be able to do, to be a wife. But what we're saying is, 
that this is fiqh, this is dalil, and by no means we're saying this is the best way, or this is what we should do, or this is what you should do. But here we're talking about rulings, and ahkam, uh, and fiqh, okay? So very important, yani, you don't get caught into, into this. Because if it's all about, if we love on that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we, then we will say, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create the kuffar? Why he allows someone to be kafir? Because just for Allah to allow and the qadr huh, for someone to be kafir or someone to be sick or someone to be diseased or someone die from cancer does not mean that Allah loves it or likes it. So there's difference between qadr or mashia and mahabba. Okay? When something happens, does not Allah, of course, it did not happen without the permission of Allah, but that does not mean with the likeness of Allah. Yani Allah likes it. But it happens for a hikmah. Alright? So we should not get caught with the two with the two issues. Alright. So when she is younger than nine, that is uh, the hukum that she's not uh, to be taken, her approval is not important. Martel uh, Thanya is she's over nine but before puberty. Okay? Over nine and before puberty. And the ulama have different opinions on that. قول الأول, the opinion of the majority of أهل العلم, أن للأب أن يزوج ابنته الصغيرة التي بلغت تسع ولم تبلغ بعد. The majority of the ulama said the father has the same right as if she's younger than nine. So they said there's no difference between nine and ten. If she did not reach the age of puberty, the father still have that privilege not to take her or to ask for her permission. And their دليل that the Prophet ﷺ married Aisha when she's nine, and they're saying that nine, ten, eight, it's not a big deal, yani, if it's below the age of puberty. قولي الثاني أنه لا يجوز للأب أن يزوج ابنته بعد التسع إلا برضاها that after she, after nine years old, that's the second opinion, the second the opinion of Imam Ahmed, that the father has no right to marry his daughter if she reaches nine or older without her approval. And wallahu a'lam, this opinion is more correct. This opinion is more correct, just the fact, because Aisha was younger than nine. So if we're going to use that, the dalil to decide the age, then over nine, you have to get the approval. Okay? You have to get the approval. And Aisha, radiallahu anha, uh, said, reported that she said, إِنَّ الْبِنْتَ إِذَا بَلَغَتْ سِتْ or تِسْعَ سِنِينَ فَهِيَ جَارِيَةِ If the womb, if the girl reaches nine years old, then she is jariya. Jariya, yani perhaps young woman. Okay? So that means she has the right to decide for herself. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi وَالْبِكْرُ تُسْتَأْذَنُ فِي نَفْسِهَا البكر يعني a young woman who is virgin should be asked for her permission should be asked for her permission. And overnight, they said, yani she's becoming a woman, so uh, she has the right to decide for herself. So Allahu A'lam, the majority, the opinion of the majority is she doesn't have the right to have the approval, yani the father, the one he can decide. And the second opinion, which is stronger opinion, that she needs, if it's overnight, then she should not be married without her approval. And obviously the third level, is if she reached puberty. If she reached puberty, okay, and this woman has to have the approval. She has to approve without any any uh, problems. قول الأول إلى حنابلة والشافعية والمالكية أن الأب يزوج ابنته البالغ من غير رضاه. Even with this, the ulama said that the father has the right to marry his daughter without her permission. Okay. That is the first opinion. The second opinion, which is the right opinion and uh, close to the truth, and that is the opinion of Abu Hanifa and the Thawri of Ibn al-Mundir, and Imam Ahmed, and the opinion of Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah, that she, he has the father or the wali has no right without her approval. Without her approval, and that's stronger, because the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fi nafsi. Because the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ indicates that well, some of the women need have to have the permission, they have to allow the marriage. 
So where are those? If you're going to go with the opinion that below nine and over nine and after puberty, the father has the absolute right without her permission, what are we going to do with the hadith? Okay? So the hadith indicates that over nine, period, over nine, whether she's reached puberty or not, she has to have the approval. Below nine, then the father decides for that. And again, yeah, and this is just fiqh, and that perhaps is not happening that often these days. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So, inshallah, uh, that's all I wanted uh, to cover. So, about asking the permission, we said the boys, two levels. A boy who did not reach puberty, his father can marry him without his, uh, his, his approval over the puberty and the rush and he's, he's independent then the father doesn't have the right with the females if she's under nine the father has the right to marry her without her permission if she's nine or over uh, then he doesn't now just to, 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 to make sure if the woman uh, gets the, con the approval or the marriage contract before nine okay before nine. They agree, they do the contract before nine. At eight. That she has she doesn't have to have approval. But when they come to consummate the marriage, she's eleven. Or they say we wait to consummate the marriage when she turns the uh, into puberty. If the time of the consummation of the marriage over nine, then she has the right to approve or disapprove. Okay, so it's the time of consummating the marriage is very important. All right, so we stop here, inshallah. Quru qabihada, astaghfirullah, alayhi wa lakum. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi wa sallam.